What's going on guys, your boy King Red Diamonds and I'm back for another Neo 2 video. We'll be uh, continuing on with the Weapon Guys series. This will be the final weapon of the Weapon Guys series. Um, so I appreciate you all for you know supporting it. I appreciate you all for liking it up, uh, watching the video and everything, leaving your comments. So thank you all again. Uh, make sure to do the same with this video. I'm going to keep it going, almost to 1K. So um, I really appreciate everybody. Um, all the stuff you guys do for me, the likes, the comments, the the... The, the, the feedback and everything it really helps my channel grow so thank you so much and I appreciate it but um, we're gonna get right into this video so we are doing the fists um, the fists are my favorite weapon if not tied for the my favorite weapon in the game with the dual swords uh, reason why is because the fists are literally just like they're like every fighter's dream if you think about it they're strictly they don't they're not bladed unless you get the claws so they're pretty much just like boxing gloves almost like you're literally limited to 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 how well your body moves so like the fists are possibly if not my favorite weapon in the game i love these weapons so much i'll probably put in the most work with these weapons out of any other weapon in the game like as you can see i have 65 skill points on it uh kind of exited out if you look at every other weapon i have the only other weapon that is even close to this is the dual sword so that right there proves to you that i am a huge huge fan of these weapons right here um i've spent an extensive amount of time with these weapons i've used every single skill on these weapons um so with this weapon alone I, I know a good amount about them and I know the different situations in which they're good and different situations in which they may not be as good but all in all these weapons are possibly one of the best in the game um, strictly because of its moveset and how well it's used against enemies in the game like again not every weapon is going to be good but not every weapon is bad so there are going to be some disadvantages to this weapon but in my in my experience using them it's not much like there's not much of a disadvantage like if you understand so um moving on to its skills we have fist of reckoning we got unbroken which is pretty much um a passive that is already on the t on the fist that you that it comes with so it comes with unbroken that's what the fist come with so you're going to start off with this skill automatically equipped uh we have flying fist and then we have takedown. So, in my opinion, uh, we're gonna go with Fist of Reckoning first. Uh, Fist of Reckoning is a very good technique. Um, it, 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 it gives you an option to basically just press triangle and do like one or two punches and that's it. But if you decide that you wanna continue on your combo, you can hold triangle and you'll do this flurry of punches right here, you see? And when I tell you it does a ridiculous amount of damage, I mean it does a ridiculous amount of damage. If you can get your enemy's key drained to zero key and you pull off a Fist of Reckoning, you are going to beat the hell out of them. Literally. Quite literally. If there is no key to be used on that enemy, you're going to, hit, you're going to literally destroy them. It's ridiculous. That's how crazy the fists are. Like you can even use this if they don't have key. This technique will activate if they're blocking and you'll just chew through their defense and until they have nothing left. So fist of reckoning, definitely good to get. I would go with this first. Like again, you already have unbroken. Unbroken basically just allows you to connect active skills together. Um, and you can stack it up to 10 times. Uh, most of the time you're if you're really good at using the actives and like stacking and comboing with these fist weapons and you get it up to 10 um your attack damage is going to be ridiculous so um if you can try your best to uh stack as many active skills together as possible as many skills together as possible um even normal attacks as long as you can stack it you'll be hitting for a ridiculous amount of damage so that's already on there uh we have flying fist we can open this up uh just because of course we want to open up our pass to get the rest of our skills active and then open up your takedown um takedown again is a parry or a counter um if you're good at parrying or countering and you're good at timing uh by all means use it it's very good because it opens up for uh takedown two and takedown three uh these right here are continuation of this obviously so the first one is this 
you just switch positions and give him a little uh, back shove. Next, give him a back shove and a, a, a fist palm uppercut. This that's it, it. It pretty much launches him into your air in the air, leaving him vulnerable. And then with takedown three, you can finish with like a takedown with, with this takedown right there and put him on the ground. Um, if you're good at parrying and timing, this technique is going to do a lot of damage for you. But make sure when you do, make sure if you do this, the only way you'll be able to launch them into the air is if they're on zero key. If they're not on zero key, you will not launch them into the air. Okay, so be careful when using that. Um, but going on from there, we're going to go to, um, where is it? Battering Ram. Battering Ram is my favorite and most used combo ender. Um, the reason why is because it does so much key damage. Like the move, basically that little toss you see him do, that grapple and toss you he does, he can only do that whenever there is zero key. But if you put Masterful Slice on Battering Ram, they'll almost always be at zero key and you'll almost always pull off that move. That like battering ram does that much key damage to the point where if you do it maybe once or twice, you'll most likely drain their key on the second one and toss them away like they're nothing. So battering ram definitely grab that um, as soon as you possibly can. Uh, don't worry, I'll get to that one. I know people are waiting for that one. I'll get to that. But um, next we're gonna go with um, I'll probably go with. Um, fractured foe, excuse me, fractured foe. Uh, fractured foe is pretty much the same as battering ram, it's a combo ender. But instead of uh, this being this is on strong attacks, this one is on normal attacks, you're going to be doing this combo ender a lot, so um, it's definitely worth getting. It does a good amount of damage. Um, if you put if you put massive slice on this as well, it's going to do a good amount of damage. But in my opinion, I feel like putting a damage boost on this is a lot better just because you're going to be using this a lot more often. Um, using this for massive slice destroys the key on enemies. So uh, massive slice, I feel like is a lot better in this in this for this slot instead of for this one. But this is also very good. These two skills go pretty much hand in hand with each other. They are the they are my mainstays whenever I'm using the fist weapons. I use these techniques the most out of any other technique on the fists. Um, next, we can go ahead and get the spinning kick. Spinning kick, it looks cool, but it also has a lot of utility. Um, I've used this to put arcanas on, and I've done maybe two of them, two or three of them, and they've gotten the enemy inflicted with whatever element I had. Um, sometimes if an enemy is close to zero key, like their key is almost to zero key, I'll do a spinning kick, knock them right out of it, right down, like stagger them, put them in zero key, and then just continue to overwhelm them with attacks. So spinning kick is very useful. It has a lot of utility. It might not look much, like much, but it does definitely have a good amount of utility. So, um, if you're, if you definitely looking for a, a move that has, um, that'll help you continue your comboing, definitely throw on spinning kick. Um, next, we're going to come up here to Kick Cycle. Kick Cycle is also another one that I've put an Arcana on. Um, kick Cycle is very good. Um, probably probably one cycle would, would inflict the enemy with whatever element you have on your fists. So um, if you really want to, like, you know, get up elemental debuffs on enemies, um, Kick Cycle definitely will help you out. Um, next, we're going to come down to uh, Knife Hand. Knife Hand Strike is another combo ender. Um, it's very good. It's very fast. It doesn't do as much damage as maybe Battering Ram and Fracture Foe, but it is a combo ender, so um, it'll help you chain together your attacks for Unbroken. This basically helps keep up your Unbroken stacks. So um, if you do this, switch to another technique, you can come right back to this and just keep on going back and forth, back and forth, and keep on stacking up your Unbroken stacks. But... Um, Definitely knife hand, very good combo ender, not bad at all. Um, we have stomp right here and reckless charge, um, all the way up to um, dread slayer. Stomp is is not bad of a technique at all. It increases your attack power of the next active skill you use. Um, if you, like I say, if you're good at chaining combos and chaining active skills together, stomp actually has a um, a very good usage. Whenever I, when I first started using the fist. I would pair Stomp with Limitless. 
Um, the reason I haven't chosen Limitless yet is because Limitless is more of a situational move. It's not something that you'll just be able to do every time you fight someone. This has a very specific situation in which you want to use this. This is why I haven't chosen it yet, but I'll talk to it, talk about it when I get there. But uh, back to Stomp, I've used Stomp to pair with Limitless, and I've gotten a ridiculous amount of damage out of it. Um, but again, like I said, these two are used in certain situations where um, it'll allow you to, to use both of them at the same time. Other than that, you have to make sure that you meet the requirements for that situation in order to use them. Other than, if, if you don't, then you'll pretty much, um, you might end up just losing the stomp stack. You'll do, you'll do stomp, get the attack buff, but then like when you do another active skill onto it, it really won't like do as much damage. I feel like this um, active skill paired with this one is probably the best way to use stomp. Other than that, um, I wouldn't say stomp is very necessary. Um, now, if we come over to Reckless Charge and uh, Dread Slayer, these two are actually very good. Um, I'm not usually a fan of um, charging techniques that make you pretty much run towards your enemy, but with these two techniques right here, Reckless Charge and Dread Slayer, which is pretty much a follow-up to Reckless Charge, it's very good. Um, it does a good amount of damage. It does a nice amount of key damage as well. If you put Masterful Slice on this, um, you'll definitely do a good amount of key damage because while you're charging, you're already hitting the enemy, draining their key. And then when you finish off with those three uh, solid attacks at the end, you can get behind your enemy and you always and you already know whenever you're behind the enemy, you do a lot more damage than when you're in front of them. So um, Dread Slayer is actually pretty good, so we can grab that. Um, next, we have Rising Gale. Rising Gale is pretty much um, a key pulse that allows you to move forward while attacking. It's just like um, from the Tonfa, I think it's called Fleet Foot. Yeah, Fleet Foot from the Tonfa is just like that. If you press up on the left stick, you'll pretty much do... Uh, um, oh, it's not Fleet Foot. It's the Grapple. It's the... Um, Demon Dash, I think. Yeah, Demon Dash, basically, if you press up on the left stick um, in the middle of a fight, you'll pretty much um, do a key pulse and stuff like that. So um, it's very good for being able to key pulse and continue to attack. Um, it's it, it helps without having to press R1 all the time. So if you want to just continue attacking, just press up on the left stick and you'll automatically key pulse. Now, it does not give you back as much key as a regular key pulse would, but it will, it, it will extend your combo. So um, it does have nice utility. So we'll go ahead and grab that. Um, next we have um, Ocean Zephyr. This one is more so for just a, a, a dodge. It's not something I would say is like you absolutely have to have it. You don't really. I don't even use it that much. I more so have skipped this technique just because it's like if I'm going to dodge, I'm probably just going to press X to get out the way rather than to try to be fancy and use this and get hit. So um, Ocean Zephyr is not really something I would say like you absolutely need, but if you want to use it, you for all means you can use it me personally i don't just because again like i don't really see the point in me using this to dodge when i can just press x to dodge and it's about a lot more safer to press x rather than to do this uh, if we drop down to here we have defensive drop all the way to sunrise uh, defensive drop basically just puts you in a position on the ground where you can counter enemy just like this if you do it at the right time other than that you'll pretty much just be laying on the ground wide open um, and this only works on humans, does not work on yokai. Um, it, if you, it, this grapple will not work on yokai. As in, you can still do defense, defensive drop against a yokai, but this grapple right here will not work on a yokai. You're not taking any yokai down like that. Um, next, we have a defensive drop two, which is if you're doing um, strong attacks in low stance, and then you press and hold triangle after perform performing your second strong attack, you'll transition into... Uh, defensive drop as you can see right here and then we have sunrise which is a wake up move basically once you're in defensive drop you can press triangle and you'll pretty much spin up like that now this will work against yokai this technique definitely works against yokai but this one right here does not this grapple will not work on a yokai only a human but this right here is definitely going to work on a yokai if you want to pull it off um, me personally I never really use defensive drop just because i don't want to leave myself that wide open to an enemy and rely on my timing just to you know attack the enemy i feel like this is more of a stylized move as in someone who 
likes to be overly flashy or likes to you know look cool when they're doing their moves and stuff so me personally i wouldn't grab this um if you want to and you like how it looks and you feel like you can use it in your combat by all means do so me personally i would not so i'm gonna go ahead and skip those um next we have iron grip this one is a ch uh, just a change of position so if you um do a strong attack and then press square at the end of the combo you'll grab them and switch positions with them like that uh, not something I would say is absolutely necessary, but you're going to grab it just because these right here you're going to need. Um, so I'll grab it for now until we come back and get these. Um, now we have we have our um, Archer's Impact. Now Archer's Impact is not something I would say is like um, very useful in terms of combat. The only reason I would use Archer's Impact is because of um, this right here, Tiger's Claw or Tiger Claws. You get Tiger Claws from fighting Ren Hayabusa. It's a extra skill drop, basically. So you fight him, and hopefully he'll drop the um, smithing text for you to get this um, this um, art of combat drop. You can only use Tiger Claws if you're using the claw weapons. If you're using the fist weapons, you will not be able to do this technique. Um, if you didn't know already, uh, the fists have two variations of it. They have the fists, which are the blunt weapons, and then they have the claws, which are the bladed weapons. Fists do more key damage, claws do more melee damage. You can only use tiger claws if you have claw weapons equipped. Um, I think you can also do them if you refashion your claw weapons to be fist weapons. You can still do it, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty positive you can still do it because it te they st technically are only refashioned, so they still count as claw weapons. They just look like fists. So you can definitely do this technique if you have your claws refashioned to be fists. But um, if you have your fists refashioned to be claws, I do not think it'll work that way. So um, just make sure um, if you do want to use this technique that you have claws equipped and not fists. Um, so next we have Wolf Claw. Wolf Claw only basically gives you anima back. You do not need this technique. It's not something I would say you absolutely need. It just get, it literally just increases your anima. Most of the time, if you've put a build together late game, um, you'll be gaining anima back no problem at all. So you do not need this technique. Yes, it will help you get anima back quicker, but in terms of like utility in battle, it's not something that you absolutely need because again, you'll have so many different um, effects and buffs active that'll gain you anima back no problem. Honestly, the one thing I say would pretty much be better than using this is to use an Arch Yokai Talisman. The Arch Yokai talisman, talisman basically gives you anima gain. Basically, you gain anima using that talisman, so you'll always have anima. So, using Wolf Claw is not something I would say you need to use because it doesn't really do much outside of give you anima. So, um, we can go ahead and skip that. But again, we're back to our takedown and our um, and our pretty much our parries and stuff. So again, I told you before, takedown three um, is a really good technique. It only works on humans. Um, if you can get the timing right, it does a lot of damage. So definitely use it if you are someone who is a fan of grappling or a fan of parries and stuff like that. Um, here we have opportunist and opportunist two. Opportunist is another parry. Um, pretty much, as you can see right here, opportunist allows you to um, block an oncoming attack. Like it, it puts you in a stance to guard and block an oncoming attack. You take no damage if you do it at the right time. And then if you press square, you can actually counter attack with a punch. And then opportunist two allows you to do the same thing, but counter with an even more powerful punch after your initial one. So the first one counters and then does a punch. So counter, punch. This one does a counter, punch, and then an extra punch at the end. Sort of like a... um like a Bruce Lee type of attack and stuff, much more powerful. If you are very good at using opportunist, you can literally tank hits from enemies. If you can time it correctly, you can continually throw out opportunist and just block, 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 and like continually block enemies attacks. And then if you time it at the right time, deliver a ridiculous amount of like a ridiculous power, rid ridiculously powerful blow to them. Um, especially if you decide that you want to put a damage boost on this technique. Um, Opportunist is not bad at all. It's very good. does a lot of damage. But again, only use it if you um, are good at timing your parries and your counters. If you're not good at timing parries and counters, 
you're putting yourself at risk to be killed in this game late game um, enemies are no joke they do not play around they're not like early game enemies where um, you can stand still and they can hit you like four or five times and you still won't die you will be lucky to survive three hits in depths of the underworld depending on your build so um, make sure if you're using this technique any of these techniques that you're being that you that you know that you're good with timing your your counters and parries don't use them if you just think they look cool and you want to try it out no now if you do want to try it out and you're not good at parries but you want to get better with your timing I advise you come to the dojo and practice but don't go straight into the game and try to practice in game and then you end up losing and dying and now you're frustrated because you can't beat the level come to the dojo first practice once you get your timing down then you can go into the game um, but again me personally I'm not a parry type of guy so I'm not gonna equip these um, if you guys do want to see like specific skills used in game um, just let me know in the comment section and stuff and then I'll you know put out videos um, showing people how to use specific skills in the game and where they would probably be best used and wh what they're best suited for uh, so again if you guys want to see like specific skills like opportunist or takedown in like you want to see gameplay or see how they're used let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely get to that but again I'm going to skip these because me personally I wouldn't use these um, next we're going to come up to limitless now earlier I mentioned limitless because it would pair nicely with stomp um, the re the thing the reason I said that limitless is more of a restrictive um, technique as you can see he's charging up and delivers a ridiculously powerful punch but look at the charge time about one like I can I'm gonna count it all for you guys and see how long that takes one two three that's three seconds that's entirely too long three seconds is entirely too long in a fight on Neo him standing there like this I could be attacked with two three times within that time range that's why I said this move is, an, is a very limited move but it's a very powerful move you want to use this technique only if an enemy is in zero key and I mean only if they're in zero key and they just got there don't allow them to get in zero key stand still for a while and get their key back because they'll just move out the way or they'll attack you immediately and then you'll be thrown out of the technique the technique will not tank through hits it will take a hit and you will be interrupted and you would have to start all over if you haven't already died now the reason I said it pairs well with stomp is because once you do stomp you can immediately go into a limitless and you already have your um, attack buff from stomp on your limitless so then you're going to do a ridiculous amount of damage um, I have a few build videos out that work with the fists and in those videos you'll see me use this technique the limitless technique with stomp and you'll see how much damage they do um, I'll actually link one of them or uh, if I can if I if I, if you guys want I can link more of them but I'll link one of my fist build videos in the comment in the description uh, to let you guys see it and see what I mean by how, how powerful limitless is as a technique but again it is very limiting in when to use it you are not going to want to use this mid combat because you will definitely it will it, you probably won't get it off unless they're really far away and then what would be the point of you doing it unless they ran at you and you timed it at the perfect time so whenever using limitless make sure the enemy is in a down or um, staggered zero key status and then you can use it but do not try to use it mid combo or mid combat it's not going to work out for you um, now to the part that everybody was probably waiting for limit beyond infinity beyond infinity is a move that when it first came out made my jaw drop because I had never in my life seen a move like this in a video game now most moves like this you'll probably see as like a, a super attack or like an ultimate attack or something like a like something like if you're playing like um Street Fighter or um, Dragon Ball Z Fighters or uh, something like that like a fighting game like that where they have like level techniques like level twos level threes level four five six and sevens like that this is the type of technique you'll see in that game for a game that's a full like a RPG like open kind of open world RPG action adventure type game 
you would not expect to see a technique like this in a game like this. So when I first saw this technique, it was amazing. Look at this. If you can time it right and you put this technique, you put a damage bonus on this technique after doing a stomp and having your stacks of unbroken maxed out, my goodness, you're going to do a ridiculous amount of damage. Like that technique is insane. And I'm not going to tell you that it's not good. It's very good. It's a very good technique. It works against every enemy in the game. It does not matter who you use it on. If you get this technique's timing down, you will destroy enemies with it. That's all I can. That's pretty much all I can say about it. So obviously we're going to grab it. But using this technique, make sure uh, you get the timing down. I'm not saying that you absolutely necessarily do have to get the timing down, but if you do get the timing down, you'll definitely, for one, you'll feel a huge sense of accomplishment, and two, you'll do a ridiculous amount of damage where the enemy can't even react fast enough to either evade or block. So make sure you uh, definitely try this technique out. I'm going to try my best to get all the t stacks of it and get the timing down in this video so you all can see it. Um, but if I don't, then maybe we'll come back in another video and when I do like individual techniques and stuff, um, I can try my best to get it that way. I've, I think I've only gotten this done. I've only gotten it done maybe two or three times out of as long as this game's been out. I probably only got it perfectly down like two or three times, but, um, yep. Yeah. Beyond infinity. But um, that is actually all of the techniques in the game, not in the game, but in on the um, on the fist. That's all of the actives on the fist that I would say I would use. Again, these are more so for like flashiness, and if um, if you feel like you really want to use this, me personally, I would not, um, just because like it, it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me in general. Like, of course, this is a good takedown, but you have to time it right. Um, and a lot of the time my timing isn't the best so i usually stay away from that that way i can keep myself alive longer rather than trying to just do stuff to look cool uh, again you don't really need this at all um, i'm not saying it's useless it is useful but in my opinion there are a lot of better ways to gain yourself anima rather than trying to use this technique these are your parries and uh counters and stuff so if you really like parries and counters by all means use them and then uh yeah this is all the techniques right here but um next we're gonna go around mystic arts and then i'll get the rest of the stuff that i need and we'll move right into the the skill setup but um our first mystic art is unbowed and then our second one is gong unbowed as you can see reduces your key consumption as you connect skills while the enemy is aware of your presence and then um, gong activates when you recover full key from a key pulse further extends the duration of the unbroken skill so basically um, this one just gives you um, as long as the, the enemy is as long as the enemy sees you this hurt this this um, mystic art pretty much comes into effect you use less key and that's pretty much it with the fists you want to have this the fists are very 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 key heavy weapon um, the fists probably use out of any weapon in the game they might be top two if not number one on key usage uh, just because of how how much you'll be chaining together attacks like the the the, the fist um, basically wants you to chain together attacks it wants you to continually attack and be super aggressive that's the type of weapon they are um, so having unbowed will reduce the key consumption when you're attacking an enemy this pair with the ultimate courage stat which further reduces the key consumption of your attacks makes the fist a very devastating weapon so we're definitely going to grab that we'll even set it and then we have gong gong activates when you fully recover key from a key pulse um basically extending the duration of your unbroken now yes unbroken does have a time limit as most actives as most passives and actives and buffs in this game do um but if you have this activated you'll be able to extend the duration of um, unbroken to continually stack up um, to your 10 stacks and get your high melee attack damage um, so basically um, if you want to use both of these 
get the Mystic Diet. Um, it's not absolutely necessary. Um, it would help a lot, but it is not absolutely necessary. So you don't have to have both of these active. The only one you might want to have active is Unbowed. Um, this one is not that necessary. Not many people I've seen use the fist uh, rather than maybe a handful can even get 10 stacks of Unbroken. I don't even think myself I've even gotten 10 stacks of Unbroken myself. Um, a lot of other people, I've not a lot, but a, like I said, a handful of other people I've seen do it. So um, it is possible. You just have to be very, very good with um, chaining together attacks. So um, definitely go for Unbowed. Gong is a uh, it's pretty much um, an icing on the cake, not something you absolutely need, but it is very useful. But um, that is actually all of the techniques. So again, if you want to take a picture, screenshot, um, stop it, pause it, whatever, do what you got to do. And then I'm going to grab the extra skill, the extra passes that we need, and then we'll get right into the, the uh, skill breakdowns. So of course, we need our Shadow Strike. Of course, we need our Passes to Afterlife. Uh, do we have the other one? Do, do, do. Uh, no. So, um, I'll go ahead and grab this, which reduces the key damage when I'm using the fist. I'll grab this, which increases my, my melee damage against zero key enemies, which is very, very useful, very necessary for the fist. Definitely grab this. Um, increases melee damage from fist against enemies that have zero key or less than 4%. Definitely, uh, definitely like get this uh what else we got uh five dragon carter um in my opinion i feel like using elemental weapons in this game is, is the is the is the meta um that's the wave you must uh you don't have to but i feel like it is the it is more um it's more advantageous to use um elemental weapons instead of using a weapon that doesn't have an elemental buff on it so like purity corruption water fire lightning all that stuff um definitely try using an elemental weapon because um getting elemental debuffs on your enemies especially in late game like depths is very necessary um you'll need to debuff your enemy because if you do not the enemy health pool and the key pool is massive they take um little to no damage unless you're debuffing them you must debuff your enemy if you try to go in there with no debuffs you're going to be in for the fight of your life um, so make sure you're using elemental weapons unless you're just that good at the game where you don't need to. Uh, next, I'll just grab this relentless just for extra key. And uh, that would be all the skills that I absolutely need. So again, this is how they look, how it looks. And we're going to go to the second half. So I will see you guys in the second half. All right, guys, welcome to the second half of the video. Um, now I'm going to go over the skill breakdown and then uh, we'll get into the combat and then we'll get you guys out of here. So, um, ah, this is what the one I did I missed. So let me go back real quick just to do a quick update. This skill right here is the Azuna drop, just like with this, uh, the dragon, with the regular um, sword. You get this from Ren Hayabusa. Um, Azuna drop is a grapple, like I said, just with the sword. So um, we come here. Um, definitely Azuna drop, no question. Azuna drop every time. This move, this grapple does a ridiculous amount of damage to the to human enemies. Um, of course, the regular grapple looks really cool. Um, the regular grapple looks really cool for the fist, um, but Azuna drop does a lot more damage, in my opinion. So I would go with Azuna drop before anything else. Um, this is obviously sneak attack. That's regular. Um, we got unbowed. That's what we want. Fist of reckoning. Yes, we want fist of reckoning in our high stance. Battering ram. The only one goes there, so we're gonna keep that there. Um, spinning kick on when it goes there. Right here, we definitely want beyond infinity at the top. Rising gills. The only one that goes there, and kick cycles. The only one that goes there. Um, here we have fracture foe. Yes. Battering Ram, yes. Takedown, Spinning Kick, or Opportunist. Since I don't really use Takedown or Opportunist, I'm going Spinning Kick. Uh, reckless Charge. Um, yeah, we can go Reckless Charge here just for now because uh, Stomp I'm not going to be really using to take advantage of. Um, up here, you could... Where is it? Uh, 
limitless you could go limitless but again i'm not going to use limitless just because um limitless really only works against enemies who are zero key but um human enemies recover faster than yokai enemies so limitless is a lot better to use on yokai enemies rather than human enemies so i'm just going to stick with beyond infinity since you can use this against both humans and yokai um this reckless charge yes rising gale and kick cycle the only one that go there um here we're going to use nice knife hand um, iron grip the only one that goes there spinning kick the only one that goes there uh reckless charge yes flying fist the only one that goes there and these are the only ones that go there so um this is how i would set up my um skills uh you can slow the video down pause it you know see which ones i got set and where but this is how i would set up my skills um again certain skills you don't need to use uh, certain skills are better against certain enemies rather than others uh, again with the uh, limitless and stuff limitless is good against very very good against yokai since yokai are stunned for a lot longer than human enemies are stunned so they're very good against yokai it is it can be used against human enemies but it's not something i would say that you um that you would want to try to chase and use against a human enemy just because um they recover faster so unless you immediately um after getting them zero key and you've staggered them charge up and limitless um i don't find much use for it outside of fighting against yokai but um that is all of them so again take the picture pause it slow it down see which ones you like the you you see how i got my set and we'll move forward but yeah let us get to it oh let me uh yeah all right cool so of course we're gonna fight our human enemy first Look at that. He had half his key and battering ram drained all of it. I don't even have masterful slice on it. That's how powerful battering ram is. That's what I meant by battering ram is a ridiculous move. See if I can pull off of a Beyond Infinity. I actually want to hit him. I almost got it. I ran out of key. <laughs> It is. Yeah, see like you can see how devastating that move is. But if if you don't if you don't uh get all the the stacks of it, then it's like it slows down a lot. Like as you see I just like he's almost dead off of two beyond infinities. That's how crazy that technique is. But if you if you can get it down packed, like if you can get the timing down you're gonna have so much fun like you're just gonna feel so accomplished like you're gonna feel like you're a fighting god literally like that's how fun the fists are the fists are by far one of the most fun weapons in this game and actually i'm gonna show you the difference between limitless and uh how limitless works and stuff so um after I finish off him, I'll show you against the human, and then I'll show you against him. I'll even show you the other grapple, um, other than the Zuna. Because I do like the other, the, the, I do like the default grapple on the fist. It's really cool. It looks really cool. 
but Izuna drop in my opinion just does a lot more damage so um As you can tell, fists are definitely my favorite, like one of my favorite. My combat with this weapon is a lot smoother than my combat with any other weapon other than the swords, the dual swords. If you watch gameplay of me fighting with the fists and fighting with the dual swords, you'll realize that I can, my transitions between stances, even between combos is a lot cleaner, a lot smoother just because I've spent so much more time using these weapons than I have any other weapon. So, um, what we're doing is we're going to go to uh, Limitless. We're going to change you to regular grapple for the humans. And then, yep, that's it. Oh, and then uh, Stomp. So, I can show you the pair between Stomp and uh, Limitless. So, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do Limitless on the human enemy. And I'm going to show you that it only usually works when they're either zero key or if they're staggered and like standing still. But I won't be able to do that mid combat because they're going to charge me. Right here. As you saw, I took way too long he even actually gave me opportunity to hit him it just takes way too long to activate that's the only opportunity they can give me if he doesn't attack he literally has to let me hit him in order for me to do that in combat but not many enemies especially late game are going to allow you to just stand there and charge up like such can't do it but you saw when i did hit him i completely broke his guard his guard was just non-existent at that point but if I get him down to zero key, I have enough time. And even then, he still had time to recover. That's how long the charge up time for Limitless for uh, Limitless is. Like you have to be very, very quick with what you want to do. And that's that's the actual grapple. I'll do it again just so you guys can actually see it. But that's the actual grapple for uh, the fist. If you don't have um, the Azuna drop. The actual grapple for the fist is pretty cool looking. Man, see, it looks pretty cool. As you can see though, the, the fists are very key heavy. Like I'm running out of key very quickly just because of how like how much they use, how many techniques you have to do, like how they want you to play. I'm being very aggressive. I rarely back away from them. Just because that's how the fists want you to play. The fists want you to be aggressive. They want you to be up close.
And that right there was an opportunity I had used to do limitless. He was on the ground, so I charged it up before he got up. He ran at me, and I let it go, and it, and it pretty much activated as he was coming at me. Those are opportunities in which you have to use it, but that's a very specific opportunity. It's not something you could just pull out in battle as you saw before. But I'm going to show you the difference between using limitless against a human and using limitless against a yokai. Much, much easier, much more simple. As long as I get the yokai down to zero key, I can use limitless no problem. kind of took a little while to activate it but as you saw i used stomp and then limitless right after so it's definitely something that can happen that was stomp limitless and look how long he's down on the ground like i can use that against them every time stomp limitless boom and I still had enough time to grapple. That's what I mean by limitless is a lot easier to use against yokai than humans. I've done what, like two limitless and he's almost down, he's already down to pretty much half health. And as you can see on the top of the screen in my the, the corner where you see my buffs, you saw stomp was active. That little foot with the little impact symbol underneath, that's stomp being active. So I'll do it again just to show you. There it is. I gotta do it again. But as you can see, the stomp was active. Ah, I didn't mean to do that one. Oh, well, he's gonna die. But yeah. That's the difference between using Limitless on a human and using Limitless on a Yokai. I can pull Limitless out as many times as I want fighting a Yokai, but I can't do that with humans. I have to be very careful when I use it. It's very situational. So like make sure when you um when you're using your fist weapons, you're being careful to use certain skills in certain situations and not just using whatever skill you think is going to be useful at the time because sometimes it won't work out as you might think it will. But um, that is actually going to be it for the video. I appreciate everybody for coming by. Again, remember to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel. I really appreciate everybody who's supporting the channel. All my new subs, welcome to the channel. I appreciate you guys for coming by, and I hope to, to, that you guys stick with me. Uh, for anybody who's already been here, thank you all for supporting. I wouldn't have got to where I am now without you all, so thank you so much. Um, again, if, um, if you guys want to see me use certain skills, like certain individual skills, if you want to see gameplay of them, let me know in the comment section. Um, that way I can get to those videos, get them out for you guys, and show you guys um, how I would use them and how most of them are used when fighting. But again, it's King Red Diamonds. Appreciate you guys, and I'm out.